Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Strom back with another 119 video. This is going to be a bucket of tadpole farm, so it's going to give us just buckets of tadpole that we can do whatever we want with, you know, take to our frog light farm, to our base, whatever. Uh, it, this is this is probably the dirtiest farm I've ever made. So with frogs coming out, one of the videos I did was on, you know, quote unquote, transporting frogs in a shulker box by doing buckets of tadpole. And we had just a little mini frog breeder that would, uh, you know, just give us some frogs or some tadpoles. You kind of had to manually go over and grab those, though. I wanted an AFK setup that you could just AFK because it takes a while. So you could just come back and, uh, you know, overnight, you'll have all the frogs you need to build your, your level three frog light farm from Strom, your level four from Mango, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can see behind me right there, we have Tadpole. This is a carpet bot that is running this farm AFKing for us. This is AFKable, but I will say right off the bat, this does require clicking script. So you see in the output here, we're just getting these shulker boxes and they're just buckets of tadpoles in there. These are not going to be perfectly fresh tadpoles. You know, they're not going to be down to the, you know, 19 minutes and 59 seconds, but they're going to be pretty close. From the testing I've done, I'm seeing it's less than a minute before they get into the bucket. So they've still got about 19 minutes of being tadpoles. The reason I say this is the dirtiest farm is because we're using a whole bunch of weird stuff. We've got frogs on top of stone cutters. There's a mini bamboo farm. There's some items falling through cobwebs. There's a powdered snow block over here, just having items fall through it. There are three inputs between shulkers of water buckets, snowballs, and slime balls. And I don't know how I'm going to explain this redstone. So let's just start off with the premise of it. And first of all, how you would actually run this farm as either a player or using a carpet bot. So this is one of the most difficult parts of it, because in survival mode, when you have a tadpole that is put down and you bucket that tadpole, your bucket of water just turns into a bucket of tadpole. And if you try and use a bucket of tadpole on a tadpole, it's just, it's just going to put down the tadpole in the water. So the question is, how do we get this bucket of tadpole into a hopper or an item collection? There are two ways that I can think of. One is to use your throw option to throw the bucket out of your inventory and have that lead into a hopper. The other would be to somehow kill the player and that removes items from your inventory, but doesn't help out very much. So we're gonna stick with throwing. Um, unfortunately though, we have no way to detect if we actually have a tadpole in that bucket. Yeah, all we're going to do is we're just going to set the bot to every five seconds or 120 game ticks, just throw his bucket out. And then we have soul sand here so that we actually have tadpoles that will float up above the water and have the player look forward. So instead of putting just their water bucket down when they interact with another tadpole, they'll just be, you know, swinging at the air until the tadpole actually moves in front of that player. Then he'll scoop up a tadpole and that will get shot off. However, we have to do something with those water buckets because we just don't want to lose a water bucket every five seconds. So we're going to use these guys. So we have two LAs here, one for tadpoles and one for water buckets. Now, for those of you who didn't know, you can use an LA to do item gathering on a farm and then use a note block as your return point. So if there's a note block that's feeding him a signal, he'll want to return the items to that note block instead of the player. We'll just put some sugar cane up here and then we'll set that off. I can see he's going to go around, collect the sugar cane, and then he's going to want to return it to this note block. Sometimes he misses, but that's okay. He'll go back, pick it up, and throw it again until it's all collected. And the way we're actually collecting that is there is actually a minecart inside that note block. I don't know if you can kind of see it there. There we go. There we can see it. So to do this, all we did is we just zero tick that note block into the minecart. So I'll show you just real quick here in case this is something you want to do. I don't know if I really recommend this for your item collection, but you can do this. We'll put our hopper down that would lead to our chests. We're going to put a rail down, put a note block on top of that, and then we're going to put a piston on top of that. Put the minecart on the rail, break the rail, put a button on the side of the piston. And then when I trigger that, we're going to see that note block is just going to push right into that minecart. And we can see that anything now that I toss on top of that note block is going to get sucked up by that hopper minecart and go to the chest. And then we just have a little observer clock here, just two observers facing each other. 
going off repeatedly, and that'll just keep the uh, little LA active to this note block. One thing to note, you cannot cover this up. If you cover this up so you don't see the notes, he will lose interest in that note block. So you need to make sure you're seeing the notes. And the reason that I don't have any sound for that is this slider right here. I don't want that. Options, music and sounds, note blocks, zero. Uh, and you could use this same principle on those farms that maybe have a difficult item collection. Uh, so, you know, if you decided that you want to do a piston amethyst farm and then you've got, you know, shards that are landing up here and then some over here and some down there, we could just use the LA to go around and gather them all up and he'll bring them over to this note block. And then we just have that underground to our chest. We do want to make sure we have a nice rim around here because he is going to miss um, it looks like about 30% of the times it's not going to land on top of that note block. So if we didn't have this room around here, what he's going to do is he's going to miss. It's going to fall down. He's going to come down here, pick it up and try and throw it up at the note block. So he doesn't always try and throw it on the side. So that's why we've got this kind of blocked off. So the only place he can reach is the top. So what we're doing right here is we've just got the LA's and mine carts right next to the note block. So they keep interest in the note block. I try and throw it at the note block, but the hopper underneath them immediately sucks that up. And then in the case of water, we just recycle it back into the system. And then tadpoles just go into a shulker loader. And then we end up with shulkers of tadpoles. That was the easy part. I wanted this to be just single player. And that means that we need to be able to breed frogs with the same player. Well, you could put the frogs down here. Yes. And just have them kind of swim around and they lay their frog spawn. Um, I wanted it to be more controlled. And so this might be over-engineered. Because we might have just been able to, you know, make another waterway for our tadpoles. But the thing is, moving water doesn't really push tadpoles. So they can swim against the current, kind of like squids could. So what we have here is we have the two frogs up in this cell. And then they have these water blocks they can lay their frog spawn on. This trap door and these uh, stone cutters are just the right height that they can see each other. So they can breed, but they can't escape. But we need a way to get this player up to those guys and be able to breed both those guys and then back to his original spot. So this is an item despawn clock. This is an item that lands on a wooden pressure plate. And when that wooden pressure plate is active with the item on it, it turns off a torch. And then after five minutes that will despawn. And then this pressure plate will move up and uh, repower this torch. And then we can use that signal as our clock. We're gonna then send the player up over to the frogs and then back to his spot. Problem number two, the water bucket. Since we're doing use continuous, so it's as if you're holding the right click button, what happens when you come up here to breed the frogs and you know we have note blocks all the way here, but here you need to be able to see the frogs and he right clicks on this slab and dispenses water and then it flows down here, breaks this redstone, it breaks that redstone, it breaks this redstone over here. Um, you decide to take some TNT and blow it all up because you just give up. So we should, yeah, we should get that out of your inventory so you don't do that. That's why we have the snowballs. So right before this player gets launched, a snowball gets shot out of this item frame, which then breaks the water. So that item frame is now open. So when the player passes it, they're going to put the water into that item frame and they'll continue up here without any water. And we can see in the player's offhand is then actually the slime balls. So that's what we're going to use to breed the frogs. Hit them with a couple of slime balls, send them back down. And then you run out of slime balls. So we had to add some more droppers over here that would feed the player slime balls whenever this happened. Now, I started out just doing two, and what I was originally going to do was just have observers look at these frog spawn. So whenever a new frog spawn is laid and when it hatches, each time it would dispense a slime ball, and you would you know be able to say, okay, that's how many times he's bred. However, the player also will then feed the frog some slime because there's a little bit of time in there to make sure that the player can catch up with the clock. So then after about three breedings, the player was running out of slime balls. So instead what we did is we just dispensed uh, some extra slime balls uh, over to the player so that they could then refill up that stack to maximum. Then we would come to the problem where the player could pick up slime balls in their main hand. And if we just kept feeding it to them, then they would never pick up a water bucket. And then they would just spam feed the tadpoles. And then you just have like five frogs in here and that's it. 
So we only feed that partial stack of slime balls after the breeding timer has gone off. That way, even if this player does happen to pick up a slime ball or two in the main hand, it will favor that on the drop and it will throw those out and then we just get back here and, and burn it. So this is not slime lossless. Um, big whoop. There are tons of slime farms you could do, especially after the video that Il Mango put out with this, the uh, new swamp slime farm design. Swamp sli swime, the swime design. Honey, I can't come to dinner right now. I'm making a swime design. So we just toss in extra slime and, and that'll be fine. Honestly, after just like an hour of running Il Mango's farm, I think you're already getting um, yourself like a shulker box full of slime balls. So it's not that difficult to get. This is what I've been running for uh, probably about five hours so far. I have not been tick warping it um, because of the player movement that goes through with, um, you know, this block being pulled away and the couple of slime launchers and the ice block getting pulled out and then the throws. Um, the tick warp was just running into too many problems that I did not see when I was running it at regular speed. So I know that can happen occasionally with tick warp. So um, I didn't get to run like a full 12 hour test on this, but in the five hours that I have been running it, we're getting our buckets of tadpole. So after I'm done recording this, I'm gonna run it for a little bit longer and uh, we'll see if any other issues arise. So if you look at this and you take the world download that will be down in the video description, you notice something a little different. Um, don't worry about it. It's just from running testing and I found a slight issue, but so far so good. Now, how you actually use the farm as a survival player. Again, um, if you're going to use a clicking script, um, you can go ahead and do that. You can much more easily run this with a carpet bot because then the carpet bot won't have any server desyncs if you run this on a server. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to open this trap door and then you as the player can get in. I'm going to just hop in there, close the trap door, or I guess that would be open it, whatever you, you know what I mean, and then push yourself up against it. You obviously don't want to be standing in the bubble column here, and you don't want to be in the cobweb. So right nice in the center, and then pushed up against this trap door. You're going to look right here at the white above this uh, bullseye, and then you would do your use continuous. So that's uh, hold right click, whatever you have in your auto clicker to just hold down your right mouse button. Then you want to put that into your offhand and a bucket in your main hand. And then you want to set that so that every five seconds, you are throwing out that bucket. What I would recommend to make sure that that's even uh, tighter, the time that you pull in a bucket, is right here is your on off switch. So this is how you can then turn it off. So it turns off all the clocks. This is then going to start up this uh, version of the Etho hopper clock here. So this is a hopper clock that is exactly eight game ticks in length. So this will be exactly 120 tick clock. Unlike the version where you just have the redstone dust here that actually loses half a tick on each run. So you would come into your spot here, and when you hear that hopper clock go off, that's when you start your five-second timer. So when you hear that hopper clock tick off, that's when you start your five-second timer. That way you'll have an extra bucket sitting in this cobweb so that you always have one ready to pick up. So again, here's all the input. So this is going to be inputting shulker boxes of water buckets. Here we're going to have the input for the snowballs. Right here is the input for the slime balls. And then in this stack right here is where you put your empty shulker boxes for the shulker loader. And then when you're done, just turn it off. Just note that you will still probably have some eggs up here uh, that are going to turn into tadpoles and then maybe frogs later on. You can just clear those up or you can just kind of manually scoop these guys up. So yeah, that's going to be it. There were a couple more challenges, um, such as the fact that you can actually interact with a stone cutter. Now, if you're using a carpet bot, that part doesn't actually matter. So this uh, slab system here is not necessary. But if you're doing it as a player, what can happen is as you're flying by it, you then actually, uh, you know, you're holding down the right click and then you actually just interact with the stone cutter instead. So because we're looking up, we never actually get to see that stone cutter with this slab here. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it a different spot that I wanted to move this slime block to with the height that you get launched and all that. So, so that actually ends up pulling back that slab. So we just have another delay over here to just push that slab back into place. And then I don't know if this is directional or what, but you can see these frogs this entire time, except when mating, they stay in these far opposite corners of each other. What I'm assuming is going on is they're trying to pathfind to one of these water blocks that they can see. 
Um, and so we did use this system where you're all the way over here on the left and they get pushed over to the right over the ice so that you cover the entire thing. That way you can still hit both of them. And then once again, we did use the powdered snow here to slow down the items. So allays, when they have items dropped at them from out of a dropper, they can actually pick out those items right away. However, if the player drops them, there's actually a cooldown on the item. So we can see there that that water bucket just completely bypassed that allay because that item had a cooldown on it before mobs can interact with it for a player to be able to pick it up. And since we have the water being thrown by the player here, we just, once again, we use that powdered snow. That slows it down enough that this allay with the water bucket has plenty of time to be able to pick them up. So that's all I'm going to cover here. There are a lot of circuits to see, um, but luckily there has been a community release of the Massa Mods 4119. So if you want to grab a Lightmatic of that, you can do that. There will, once again, be a world download down in the video description. I'm going to put the bot back and give it a run for another while and uh, make sure we don't run any issues before I release this video. So if you're seeing this video now, it means that there weren't any major issues. And if you're not seeing this video, you, you can't hear me talking because I didn't release the video. So let me know down in the comments if you decide to build this for yourself or for your server. I always love hearing people uh, use it and talk about how they've made customizations to fit their needs, um, or maybe you found some improvements. Um, quite honestly, this system is, like I said, it's really based around using either that bot or that clicking script. Um, maybe I'm missing something completely, but I don't think so. But if you find something, let me know down in the comments. I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.